Hi and welcome to the Indusoft video series. Today we're going to show you how to connect to a Microsoft Access 2007 database. Indusoft Web Studio, which is a full HMI and SCADA development and runtime package, can connect to any SQL relational database. It does not have to be an Access database. It can be Microsoft SQL Server, it could be MySQL, it could be Oracle, Sybase, FoxPro, any SQL relational database as well as Access or it could even be uh, Microsoft Excel. Uh, Indusoft Web Studio can log alarms, events, trends, uh, or virtually any information that you want to uh, get into or out of a database. Uh, has some uh, redundancy built in and we'll show you some of these uh, configuration options. So the first thing we're going to do is create a brand new application, new project, and this project we will call database video. And when I create this, I will create it as 1024 by 768 resolution, make a nice readable screen for you. I'm going to insert a screen, and when I insert the screen, I'm going to place on here a slider. Now this slider object will give me the ability to uh, simulate the temperature going into and out of uh, alarm condition. So I'm going to configure this uh, slider to have a tag name called temp1. And temp1 is a tag name that does not exist in the system yet. So I can configure this on the fly or I could go in and pre-create all of my tags. But Indusoft Web Studio is very flexible and it will prompt me and says, hey, this doesn't exist. Would you like to create it? And it lets me create it on the fly. So now I have this slider that will allow me to simulate that temperature going up and down. I will place an alarm event control object on the screen. Now this alarm event control object is really a display only object and it lets me show the value, the messages, the time and date that those alarms came in. So I can see all this information here on my screen. And one last thing that I need to do is to make it real convenient to leave this application, I would put an exit button on here just to show you the database when we get there. I can save this screen. I will save it as main. And now that I have that screen saved, I can go in here to the tree view and set this as startup. So this will be the startup screen when I start my application. Now again, this alarm control object does not uh, set up how I communicate to the database. I have to do that somewhere else. So that's simply under tasks and go here to alarms and insert what we call an alarm worksheet. And we'll call this uh, DB video to make this a little bit more humanly readable. And we will set this as save to disk. I will insert tag name temp uh, one. And this will be a high alarm type. And when it gets over 90, I'll display the message that the temp is too high. And using that same tag name, temp1, whoops, uh, it wanted me to accidentally create a new tag because I accidentally hit a wrong key. But no fear, we can go in and change that. We will go to temperature 10, temp is too low. Apparently I can't spell, so we'll go up here and fix this message. Temp is too low. And so now I can save this. Now this shows how the tag names will go, or that they will go into the database. But I don't have that database configured just yet. So I'm going to save this worksheet. And now I'm going to go configure my access database. I'm going to create a new access database. Create a new access database. And we will call this MyDB. And what I want to do is place this database in my project, now my project folder. Now this will make it a little bit more transportable and easy to manage, but it does not have to be here. It could be a remote database on a server, across the plant, or, or anywhere for that matter. Um, because I know that I will need this, I'm going to copy this path name and save this in my, or create this in my project folder. Now. I want to show you here that there are no tables in here except for this default table. There's no data in this database. I'm going to close this access database. I don't need it for now. Um, and now we will go set up how the, this project communicates with that database. This project has a default database and when I configure that configuration, 
it will be used throughout this application either for alarms, events, could be for trends. Now alarms and events are configured here on this page, but trends are done on an individual worksheet basis because they can be logged to independent databases anywhere uh, on the system. So uh, we'll go in here and configure this database. It could be a primary database, could be a redundant store and forward database. Uh, for now, I'm going to keep this as my primary. I'm going to click on these three dots here. And I need to set up how do I connect to that database that I just created. Now I know for Access 2007 I need Microsoft Office 12.0, Access Database Engine, OADB Provider. For other types of databases, it's a different provider. I'm going to click on Next. Now here's where I have to point to that database. I know that I need that path, mydb.accdb is right directly to that file and I can test if this works. So I can test does that work? Yes. So I know I'm communicating to that database. Um, that connection is good. So now I can use that anywhere throughout my application with minimal extra configuration. So in order to configure the alarm database, I'll configure here, uh, change this from proprietary to a database format. And I'll go in and configure my alarms. Now under alarms, uh, you can see all the default information that I set up previously <clears throat> is in here. So I don't have to duplicate that for every time I want to communicate to a database. This table will automatically create the alarm history table and I have it set up to automatically create. But you can go in here and change this name if you wanted to change to something else. For the sake of this demo, I'm just going to stick with the defaults. And that's pretty much it. At this point, uh, that's all I have to do to uh, communicate to a database. So let's show this running. I'll run my application <clears throat> and it will communicate to the database. Now when this tag name starts out, it starts out at a zero level, so I get temperature is too low. I'll go up into a normal range, and we've normalized that, up, uh, that tag name, and I can double click on it and acknowledge it and, and remove it, or I can put it up into a higher range here, and now I will acknowledge that, and that turns green, put it back into a normal level. Okay, so now we have a couple of alarms in the system. Let's go ahead and exit this application. I can go back in and open up my access database. And when I do, you're going to see something different in that database. You'll see that the uh, alarms and events were logged to that database. And it automatically created that table. Here's my database, my DB. <clears throat> it created that table for alarms and um, events. Now I have to go through some security things that Microsoft double checks me on, but these are just check boxes. Here's the alarms and the events that were created. I'll open up my alarm history table and you can see here that the time and date stamp, the messages, and all the information pertinent about that, uh, those alarms were stored in this database. So it's as easy as that. Uh, very easy to configure uh, into Soft Web Studio to write to any database. It doesn't have to be accessed. Again, it could be any SQL relational database. For more information, feel free to contact us on our website at www.indusoft.com uh, or via email at info at indusoft.com. We really appreciate your time and uh, viewing this video, and thank you very much for your interest. Have a nice day.